All right, let's take a look at this wedge brake setup. So this is obviously a cutaway trainer. We're missing our linings on our brake shoes, but our brake shoes are right here. The wedging mechanism is right here. Our return springs are right here. Our brake shoes with the tables are right here. Okay, so if we take a look, our spring brake chamber on this side, we do have a dual spring brake chamber. So we've got our park function right here and we have the service function right here. So we have our two air lines that are going to be supplied from our park function and our primary or secondary function, depending on where these brakes would have been located. Now, if we want to release, so obviously because this is a spring brake chamber, it's going to have a spring applied air released park brake and then a spring released air applied service brake. So the first thing we're gonna show is just what it means that when we release the park brakes and we send air into the spring brake chamber that we cage this spring, we actually release the brakes. And when I do that, we're going to actually see that our brake shoes right here are going to retract in. And what would happen if the drum was sitting around these brake shoes, the shoes would actually come away from the drum and the drum would be able to turn. So let's see what that actually looks like. So I'll take an airline and I'm going to simply apply air pressure into our spring brake chamber and we're going to see those brake shoes retract. Okay, so maybe we didn't see that very well. It's a very subtle move. There's not a lot here. So we're looking right here and we're looking right here for the movement. Now I'm just gonna release the air and we're gonna see those brake shoes attempt to make contact again. So you can see the very subtle lift that was happening right here, okay? So once again, just show that the brake's releasing. Okay, they get sucked in so the drum would be able to turn. Release when the air pressure is released, now those brake shoes are gonna come out and make contact with the drum. That is all happening because of this web wedge mechanism right here. So what's happening is that our spring is pushing on the push rod which is pushing the wedge mechanism into here that's going to push these pistons out and making contact they're just metal slugs in there and they're going to make contact with the shoe and that's going to push the shoe up so that was the park function okay so let's assume the operator is going to get in and they're going to release these spring brakes Okay, so now the spring brakes are released, the park brakes are released, and now this vehicle should be able to drive forward. Well, now what we need is a service brake. And so now, whether it's in the primary or secondary, whether it was mounted on the front axle, the rear axles, either way, this is a small brake chamber, so we're going to assume it's likely the front axle. It's too small, really, to be used in a rear axle, unless it's a pretty small truck it was on. Either way, so what would happen is our service air is going to come in and we're going to now have this service chamber do the work where the chamber is spring released and air applied. So now when I bring and put air into the system, so I connect air in, what we're going to actually see is the brake shoes are going to come away. So let's take a look at that. So if I add air or make a brake application, we can see the brake shoes are pushed out against the drum, and if I release that service brake application, they're now able to retract. Now, the reason they retract is because of these return springs right here. If we didn't have the return springs, or the return springs were damaged, or if they were fatigued, or if they had broke, or they weren't properly fixed onto the brake shoe, the shoe would not retract. The shoe would remain in contact with the drum and what would happen is that these shoes would try and self-energize because one of the things that happen in drum brakes is as soon as the shoe makes contact with the drum, it grabs and it self-energizes. So brake drag would happen if these springs were not there and were not in good condition. What I'm going to do is turn the trainer now and so we can see a little cutaway version of what it looks like inside the wedge brake mechanism. So like I had said, there's just two metal slugs, so that's right here and the wedge piece is right here. So this wedge rod is gonna be what gets pushed out and what gets retracted based on what is happening either in the service chamber or in the spring brake for the park function. 
So I've left the spring brakes retracted. And so what's happened is that this wedge rod is actually pulled back and these steel slugs are now retracted in. So what we can do is now make a service application to see that motion happen when we're applying the brakes. Okay, so we can see really quickly this wedge got shot out and now it's getting pushed out because the diaphragm in the service chamber is taking the air pressure and we do our force pressure area, we could figure out with the amount of air pressure I send in, with the amount of area I have on the diaphragm, how much force we're actually pushing on this wedge. And now this wedge is now gonna work against these rods, or against our little steel slugs, the pistons there, make contact with the brake shoes and apply the brake. All right, let's talk about the serviceability or maybe not so much serviceability as much as just simply adjustment of the wedge brakes. Okay, so we've already covered in the other video the fundamental operation of the wedge mechanism coming out, making contact, and applying the brakes. What we need to do then is just take a look at the bottom side here, and we have a star adjuster. It's a little bit harder to see, but it, it's tucked in underneath here. And so we have a star adjuster wheel, and that star adjuster is actually making contact or going to turn a little bit of a screw end that fits into the end of the steel slug, and we're making contact still with the brake shoe right there. So as we turn this star wheel, we're actually able to extend out this rod, which extends the brake shoe. So in the retracted position, we're changing the contact position of these brake shoes. So we can either have it all the way retracted, so pull the shoes in all the way, or we can extend it out and start making contact. And again, same as we would for any brakes, we'll go until it would touch and then we would pull them back because we want to have some running clearance. It's not okay to have our brakes dragging, so we always need a running clearance between our brake shoes and our brake drum. 